Foam Bones Building System, episode four, I think? Four. I don't know. Why am I even counting? Uh, we're talking about the glue up today. Uh, but before we get into any of this glue, uh, let's go over what we've covered in the previous volumes because you're probably going to want to watch those if you're interested in watching about gluing this thing up. You're going to need to see those first. So we've gone through the overview of how we put these things together. We've talked about how we're going to mock them up and uh, be able to adapt that mock-up as we go. We've talked about uh, the uh, putting screw anchors into foam and how to fix them when they fail. And then once we have that mock-up, we're ready to glue it together before we go and screen everything or put the uh, skins on it for our uh, final look and structure. So let's get into it. So these are the three main glues that I used when I glued the foam together. I chose them in different situations based on the properties that they have and what I needed in the particular glue up area that I, that I had. So the foam fusion from Hotwire Foam Factory, the Gorilla Glue HD heavy duty construction adhesive, and then just Gorilla Glue Original. Stick around at the end of the video, I'll go over which ones I use in which situations and why in detail. We'll talk about it a little bit during the video, but I just want you to know that at the end of the video, there's a, a detailed comprehensive look once you understand where I use them and why. Now, one thing that's important to note is that this Gorilla Glue HD, this is the one that I used primarily, or I should say this is the one that I should have used for the most of my gluing together. There's a few situations where the Foam Fusion or the Gorilla Glue original make the most sense, but I, I'm experimenting. If you haven't noticed, I'm experimenting, and uh, I use some of those when I shouldn't have. I'll point that out in the footage to come, but this is the one that I used or should have used for most of the glue up. Now, with this glue up, I want to make sure that you understand that I am building this as a kind of a unibody situation. And what I mean by that is that the foam in the floor is connected by those uh, finger joints uh, to the foam that's supporting the cabinets and the countertops, and it's connected to the foam that's in the walls, and that's connected to the foam that's in the overhead cabinets, and then that's all connected to the foam that's in the ceiling. All of these pieces are getting glued together and relying on their neighbors to uh, have the, uh, the, that structural strength. And I want that flexibility in my glue up as that's happening so that all of those pieces are coming together and relying on each other. You know, it's like the knee bone is connected to the leg bone and the leg bone is, you know that song, right? Dude, sorry if I got that stuck in your head. So that's what we're gonna be doing first, gluing up all of those initial structural pieces. So we're gonna start out with the ceiling. And what we're doing here on the ceiling is that we're gluing these pieces around the perimeter with the Gorilla Glue HD so that we can then put those up into the ceiling so that the foam is laying flat with those ridges, right? That are in my factory ceiling, right? So just using some thin boards here and some drywall jacks to jack those up. Next, I use the expanding foam to fill in the larger gaps. Now this is gonna expand too much in some areas, but I just come back through and shave those down with a hacksaw blade to get them flush. Now, moving on to the walls, because of the shape of my walls, I needed to have a two and a half inch piece. So I'm just splitting a one inch piece in half here. Now, I could have uh, clamped that down uh, on the table and I could also clamp it down uh, vertically so it was acting like a, a table saw but I'm just holding it up against a flat surface and sliding these through I don't need them to be perfect uh, I end up with a half inch piece then I'm using foam fusion here uh, I could have used anything for this but I used the foam fusion because I had it uh, and I'm just sandwiching that half inch piece between two one inch pieces one of those one inch pieces has the finger joints cut out of it then that slides down in the uh, wall here between my quarter inch uh, melanin board, the waterproof board that I use uh, for my water wall. And I'm using Gorilla Glue Original here. I chose this because it has that uh, uh, flowability and I'm uh, putting it down in there and then it's gonna expand inside of those areas. So next I need to move up to the walls here. So I'm just putting one whole piece of foam in because I had kind of a cavity 
that I need to fill in with two widths of foam. Putting in the second piece here, again, just the foam fusion glue, and I'm clamping it down. Now the floor, we'll cover the floor in detail in another video, but cut some reflex sticks out to fill the lower areas of the floor, and then cut the foam to fit exactly. Then gluing in each piece of foam with that foam, uh, the Gorilla Glue HD. Also adding glue in between each sheet as well. All of those floor and ceiling pieces already had their finger joint notches taken out of them. So now I'm just adding in the, the other pieces into those notches and gluing them up. Now I used foam fusion here and you can see it dripping. It's running, it's flowable. I should have used the Gorilla Glue HD here. That would have been a lot smarter. Then I'm adding the bed platform on the top just to hold the garage uh, system in place here. I'm not going to be gluing that in because I have a lot of other work to do on that level that I don't want to do quite yet. Moving up to the kitchen area here where I've already installed the pantry shelves with the Gorilla HD. I'm doing a little wiring here, but I'm also adding in some screw anchors for these L brackets. These L brackets are going to hold the cabinetry facing on the front once that's done there. Here I made a mistake and needed to change where I put this place in the ceiling. I just cut out a, the mistake and put a scrap of foam in there and glued it all up. It looks like crap, but uh, you know, the, the, there's going to be a, a skin over it, so who cares? Back to the bedroom area here where I needed to add a wood shelf for my sliding safe area. I just had a little bit of wood that I needed to add in. So I cut out a half inch groove in the foam and then just glued that shelf into that groove. Then repeating the same idea down below here, where my safe sliding shelf will be. Uh, we'll cover all this woodwork in a, the cabinet finishing video in the future, but I just wanted to show you here that I'm gluing, when I'm doing my glue up, I'm also incorporating some pieces that are uh, wood into my phone. So that's the basic idea behind the glue up, but there's a, an important thing that I want everyone to wrap their heads around when we're talking about this mock-up when we're building, but also when we get to this glue up stage before we screen, we can use this as a, a test. We can do test runs with this. We can use the foam without any of the screens, without any of the skinning, just plain old Pink Panther hanging out in the van while we do test runs. That can be a drive somewhere, or that can be like, hey, let's just make dinner in here tonight and see how it goes and make deeper decisions about exactly how we want things to be aligned in here. Let me show you some examples of this. So first I'll just show you this funny dash cam footage that we got. We were uh, slowing down to make a left-hand turn while going downhill. And uh, right as we started slowing down, uh, Diz started to get up and here she comes, sliding her way into the cab area there. So uh, that's pretty hilarious, but what I actually wanted to show you here is that we're on a test run going nine hours south and we're going to be staying in this van for several days and we've got this all just as pink foam uh, little ledges there instead of the fronts and the cabinets that we're going to have just trying it out for a couple of days here is another cute dog video since you like that last one so much uh, this is how we uh, unload the dogs from the back area but notice in the background uh, that's all in pink as well right just using this on a road trip to see how we like the way that things are laid out here. In the middle of that road trip, I shot a, a sneak peek video where I gave you a tour of this uh, vehicle in its pink state. Uh, some of the counters were unfinished, uh, but yeah, the cabinet all in pink here, no ceiling tiles. Uh, you know, some of the counters are unfinished there and uh, don't even have the coffee bar cabinet in there at all. Welcome home sign. Yes, it's going to be home for the next year or so. Turning around here and then heading back to the garage area. Back here, most of this space has already been finished out because I was using the bed and thus putting pressure down on these uh, structural elements. So I wanted those to be finished out and be as strong as they could be for this uh, test run that we were taking down into Southern California. So now let's review. Three important points about gluing up. Thing number one, we wanna glue up all of the pieces before doing any of the screening. And the reason that we wanna do that is that when we're putting our pieces together, we can then decide, first of all, if we even need the screen. Second of all, 
when we put the screen on, we can put the screen around the outsides of the corners or around the insides of the corners to increase that structural strength. So glue up first, then do your screening and skinning if you even need it as the second step. Thing number two, when we glue this up, we want to glue it all up so that it's in this unibody construction. For maximum structural strength, we want to have the floor connected to the wall, connected to the cabinetry, connected to the overhead cabinetry, connected to the ceiling, so that all of these pieces are relying on their neighbors for support. That's going to give us the most flexible and strong build inside of this van. Now, in my prototype videos, I was building pieces that were going to be removable. If you need that to be a situation, then forget that. You can build them as individual strong structural pieces. Now, number three, the third main point that we need to understand when we go to do our glue up is that we need to use the right glue for the right situation. So let's get into what those situations are. Foam fusion, it's very flowable. It's like uh, Elmer's glue. It wants to run with gravity. So if that's something that we can use to get down in the nooks and crannies of our build, then that's great. But if it's a situation where we don't need it to get down into the nooks and crannies, this flowing around all over the place is gonna be a big mess. It's gonna be a pain in our ass. So we don't wanna use it in that situation. It's also not the very strongest. The other thing about it is that it needs air to cure quickly. It will eventually harden up but it, if, it's not gonna happen in a hurry if there's not a lot of air down in there. The last thing is with this is that when it dries, it dries with a hard bond. In other words, it's not a flexible bond. So when it gets put under some torsion or some stress, it's going to want to break rather than flex, which in some situations is fine. So that's when we use this one. The next one that we have here is the Gorilla Glue Original. Now. This one is flowable, although not as much. If this one is flowing like, you know, Elmer's glue, this is more like a, a little thicker. But this one will flow down into those cracks and crevices if we need it to. And then when it dries, it's going to expand. Now, that's great if we want it to fill those cracks, like when we're putting in those screw anchors, those drywall anchors. That's great that it expands and fills into those cracks. We want it to do that, so we would use it in that situation. We wouldn't use this in a situation where maybe we were putting two pieces together, um, either with finger joints or just laying them flat on each other, and that expansion would move them apart in a way that we didn't want the, the, the glue up to work. The other thing, same thing as the foam fusion, this is going to harden uh, and be brittle when it breaks, uh, so if it's not going to be flexible. So if that's what you have going on in your glue up, use this one. The last one, and the one that I use the most, was the Gorilla uh, HD Heavy Duty Construction Adhesive. And this one I like the most because when I lay it down, it stays where I put it. It doesn't flow, it doesn't move. I also like that I'm putting it out with this uh, caulking gun um, so that I can, you know, kind of point it in there and uh, have a lot of glue and I'm not trying to squeeze it with my hand and uh, things like that. That makes it a lot easier to apply it. This hardens to have that flexible or rubbery uh, kind of uh, uh, finish. And that's what I really want. I've realized through this build that that flexibility is a key element and I want it. It's also pretty easy to clean up when you over, uh, when you put too much on there, you can cut it out, you can just peel it out. So when I'm doing something like this, I would just put that down in here and on here right on all of these sides and then if i'm putting another piece down onto it like this then i would be putting it along here because that's where my seam is going to come so put it here 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 and then put that other piece on there that's the way that i did the majority of the glue up of my foam in this build so now that we understand all of that, that's the glue up process. Please throw me some comments down in the, uh, the comments section here. Uh, definitely gonna need to do a q and I'm already getting a lot of questions in the comments section uh, from the previous videos. There will be a Q&A at the end once we round up all of those questions. So throw your questions and comments down there and I will address them later. Uh, be a hater if you want to. 
Um, we can address some of those uh, in the in the Q&A video as well. And then uh, coming up next is going to be the screen up of everything and the skinning. We're going to cover all the different types of skinning from the eighth inch to the veneer to some carpet to uh, all of those kinds of things. Uh, then probably into the Q&A uh, and then on to the rest of the millions of videos that I have shot already but have not edited down. So tell me in the comments section what, would, what you would like me to cover on that. And uh, yeah, like, subscribe, um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. I just, I didn't even look and I thought you were on a call and I almost just... <laughs>